Okay, so we are on to the ML uh, uh, follow alongs here. So we're gonna learn how to build some pipelines. The first I think is the easiest would be auto automated ML or also known as auto ML. And the idea here is it's going to just um, build out the entire pipeline for us. So we don't have to do any thinking. We just say what kind of model we want to run and have it to make a prediction. So what we'll do is say new automated ML and we're gonna need a data set. So I don't have one, but the nicest thing is they have these open data sets. So if you click here, you'll see there is a bunch here. And a lot of these you'll come across quite often, uh, not just on Azure, but other places like this diabetes one, I've seen it like everywhere, <laughs> okay? Uh, and so like, if we just go click here, maybe we can read a bit more here. So diabetes data set, 422 samples with 10 features, ideal for getting started with machine learning algorithms. It's one of the popular scikit-learn toy data sets. It's probably where I've seen it before, though it's not showing up there. Uh, you scroll on down, you can see the data. Uh, you notice that it's available in Azure Notebooks, Databricks, and Azure Synapse. Uh, the thing is we have these values, so age, sex, BMI, BP, and the Y is trying to make a prediction. It's trying to say, what's the likelihood of you having diabetes or not? And so it's not a Boolean value, so it's not a binary classifier. It's kind of on a, uh, well, I guess you would be doing binary classification, classification to say, do you have di diabetes? Or you can make a prediction to say, what's the likelihood or this value if you gave another value in there? But um, anyway, you, this is the predicting value. A lot of times this is X, so everything here is X, and this is considered Y, the actual prediction. Um, so some, sometimes it's Y, and sometimes it's actually named what it is, uh, but that's just what it is here. So we'll close that off. And so we'll choose the diabetes set, and it will be data set one. And so it will worry about feedback later. So we'll click on sample uh, diabetes, we'll hit next. And here it's gonna to try to figure out uh, what kind of model that we want. We have to create a new experiment. It's a container to run the model in. So we'll just say diabetes. Uh, it's my diabetes, it sounds a bit odd, but that's what it is. The target column we want to predict um, is, seeing the train to predict is the Y. It's usually the Y. Um, we don't have a compute cluster, so I'll go ahead and create a new compute. We have dedicated or low priority. Technically, we um, it is low priority, but I just want this done. Low priority, cheaper, but don't get to your compute nodes. Your job may be pre-emptied. Um, I'm gonna stick with dedicated for the time being. We're gonna stick with CPU. Uh, if we go with um, this, it does take about an hour to run. So when I ran this, it took about an hour. So if you don't mind, it's only gonna cost you 15 cents. But if you want this done a lot sooner, I'm gonna try to do something a little bit more powerful. So I'm just trying to decide here, because if it only takes an hour, uh, I might run it on something more powerful. That's 90 cents. That might be overkill, because it's not really deep learning. Uh, it's just statistical, statistical stuff. So train large data set. I wouldn't say it's large, real-time inference, other latency sensitive ones. Um, how about... Why is this one? I'm just looking here because this one's 29 cents. This one's more expensive, but it has 32 gigabytes of RAM. This one is 28. Oh, 14 gigabytes of RAM. Oh, it's storage. So this one's our highest in the tier. Again, you can choose this one. You, know, you just have to wait a, a lot longer. I just want to see if it finishes a lot faster, okay, without having to go to the GPU level because I don't think GPU is going to help too much here. Um, the computer name is uh, My Diabetes Machine. Minimum number of nodes uh, you want to provision if you want dedicated nodes to set the count here. Uh, maximum, I guess I just want one node, right? Uh, we will go ahead and, oops, uh, complete name must be two, 16 characters long. What well, doesn't, is it too long? Okay, there we go. We'll give it a moment here. Yeah, it's gonna spin up the cluster. So it does take a little bit of time to start this. So I'll see you back here when this is done, okay? Great, so after a short little wait there, it looks like uh, our cluster is running. If we double check here, we can go to compute. I believe that shows up under here, under the compute cluster. So there it is. Notice it's slightly different. This one shows you applications and this one is just size and et cetera. We can click in here, see nodes and runtimes. We'll go make our way back here. 
uh, and we'll go ahead and hit next. And notice that I think it actually will select what it generally thinks, because it'll look at your prediction value, maybe sample a bit of it and say, oh, okay, you probably want a regression thing. So to predict a continuous numeric values. So the thing is, is that if it was a label like text, or if it was just zero and one, it probably would choose classification because it's, um, you saw our, our Y value is like a number that was all over the place. It thinks it's regression. So I think that's a good indicator uh, uh, there. So let's go with regression. You know, but you might want it as a binary classifier, but uh, yeah, that's another story there. So it's, uh, as soon as we created it, it just started. It didn't give us the option to say, hey, I want to start running it. Uh, notice on this here, it's going to do featureization. So that means it's automatically going to select out features for us, which is what we wanted to do. It's set up to do regression. Uh, we have some configuration here. So training time is three hours. Doesn't mean it's going to train for three hours, but that's, I guess, it's timeout for it. Um, you could set a metric uh, score threshold. So it has to meet at least this to be successful. If it's not going to do it, it probably would quit out early. Cross number val or cross validations. Just make sure the data is good. You can see blocked algorithms. So TensorFlow, DNN, TensorFlow, linear regression. If it was using DNN, so deep learning neural network, I would, probably would have chosen the GPU to see if it would go faster. Um, look at the primary metric. It's normalized root square, uh, root mean square error. Sometimes on the exam, they'll actually ask you like, what's the primary metric for this thing? So it's good to uh, take a look and see what they actually use for that. I'll probably be sure to um, highlight that stuff in the actual lecture content. Um, but this will take some time to run. Uh, we have data guardrails. It will actually not populate, I guess, until we've ran it. So we'll just let it run and I'll see you back here when it's done, okay? All right, so after a very, very, very long wait, our auto ML job is done. It took 60 minutes. So using a larger instance didn't save me any time. I don't know if maybe if I ran a GPU instance, it would be a lot faster. I'd be very curious to try that out, but not something for uh, uh, this certification course. So we go into here and yeah, the cheaper instance was the same amount of time. So it probably just needs GPUs. It really depends on the type of models it's running. So we have a bunch of different algorithms in here. It ran uh, about 42 different models. I thought last time I ran it, I saw a lot more, but you can see there's all kinds of models that it's running and then it's going to choose the top candidate. So it chose voting ensemble. So ensemble is, um, uh, we don't cover it really in the course because it gets too much into ML, but Ensemble is when you actually use two different weaker models and combine the results in order to make a more uh, 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 powerful uh, ML model, okay? Um, so here we'll get some explanation. I tried this before and I didn't get really good information. So if we go here, uh, so like I don't have anything under model performance. So this tab requires array of predicted values from the model to be supplied. We didn't supply any, so we don't get any. Data Explorer, so select a cohort of the data. The, all the data is, is we have here. Um, so like here we were seeing age, and I guess it's just giving us an indicator about the age information. Um, use the slider to show de descending feature importance. Select up to three cohorts to see the feature importance slide by side. Okay. So I guess, S5 and BMI. I don't know what S5 is. We'd have to look up the data set. BMI is your body mass index. So that's a clear indicator as to what affects whether you have diabetes or not. So that makes sense. Age doesn't seem to be a huge factor, which is kind of interesting. Uh, individual feature importance. We can go here and just kind of like narrow in and say, okay, well, why is this outlier over here? And they're like age 79, right? So uh, that's kind of interesting to see that information. So it does give you some X, uh, explanation as to, to, you know, why things are, why they are. Um, over here, we have a little bit more different data. This is kind of interesting, model performance. Uh, I don't know what I'm looking at, but like here it's over mean squared. So it's that uh, mean squared calculation there again. Okay. So yeah, it's something, right? Uh, but anyway, the point is, is that, uh, you know, that we finally get metrics. So I guess we always had to click there because that makes more sense. Um, so yeah, there's more values here. Sure. Data transformation, uh, illustrates the data processing feature engine scaling techniques and machine learning algorithm auto ML. So, you know, if you were a real data scientist, all this stuff would make sense to you. Um, I think just with time, it'll, it'll make sense. But even at this point, I, I'm not sure. And I don't care about the model, right? If you're building something for real, I'm sure, 
the information becomes a lot more valuable. So this model is done. Uh, and the idea is that we can deploy, oops, if we go back to the actual uh, models. Oh, because we actually went into them, eh? So we go back to the um, auto ML here. I think you can deploy any model that you like. So I think you go here and deploy this. Like if you prefer a different model, you could deploy it. Um, if we go into data guardrails, we kind of skipped over that. This is uh, a way it does automatic featurization. So it's extracting up the feature. So it, how it handles the splitting, how it handles missing features, high cardinality. It's like if you have too much data, it might have to do d dimensionality reduction. So that's just saying like, hey, if this is a problem, maybe we would do some pre-processing or stuff to make it easier to work with the data. So if we're happy with this, we can go ahead and deploy it. So let's say um, deploy, I'll just say infer my diabetes. Here we have AKS and East, uh, um, Azure Container Instance. Let's do Azure uh, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes Service just because we did the other one here. Um, say uh, diabetes prod maybe, um, AKS diabetes. Oh, compute name, sorry. Um, one of the inference ones. Okay, so in order to uh, deploy this, we would have to create our pipeline. I'm not sure if I have enough in my quota here, but let's go give it a go. So I think what it's wanting is one of these here. Uh, I, I think we'd want this wherever we are, right? I'm not sure where we are, if this is US East or uh, West here. Let's go check Studio. Um, Azure Machine Learning East US. Now, I never did this when I was, um, I just use usually Azure Container Instance, but I'm just curious here. Say next. My uh, diabetes. Prod. We will, we need to choose some nodes. Uh, the number of nodes multiplied by the virtual machine's number of cores must be greater or equal to 12, okay. No, again, if you're not confident, like if you're concerned about cost, you can just, again, watch. You don't have to do, right? Um, this is, again, a, a fundamental certification. It's not super important to get all the hands-on experience yourself. Um, but I'm just trying to explore this so we can see, right? Because I, I don't care about cost. It's not a big deal to me on my machine here. Uh, so probably I don't have... System pool must use a VM SKU with more than two cores and four gigabytes. Well, what did I choose? Did I not choose the right one? Uh, we'll try this again. Oh, I chose three. Yeah, that's fair. Um, uh, what did it want? 12 cores said before, I think. Valid parameters, more details. Because it already exists based on that name, eh? Two. It's giving us all this trouble, eh? This one we'll go ahead and delete. You think like it wouldn't matter? Like I wouldn't have to delete it out, but that's fine. This one failed. Now what's the problem? Quota exceeded. So I can't do it because I don't, I'd have to go make a support request, increase it. So it's not a real big deal. Um, I guess what we could do is instead of doing it on AKS, we could just deploy it to container instance if it'll let us. Um, notice I don't have to fill anything additional in. It'll just deploy, I think. Great. Uh, and so I guess we'll let that deploy and uh, I'll see you back here in a bit, okay? All right, so I'm back here uh, checking on out on my or uh, checking up on my auto ML here. So if we go over to compute, we go to inference clusters. We don't have anything under there. If we go uh, over to our experiments under our diabetes here, 
Because we did choose to deploy the model. Right, we clicked deploy. So it should have created an ACI instance. Let's make our way over to the portal. The reason why it might not be showing up is because I'm just running out of compute. <laughs> because again, it's a quota thing. Um, it's not a big deal for us to get a deploy. It's not like we're gonna do anything with it, but uh, yeah, so we can see that we have a container over here and it's running. So we must be able to uh, see if we go to endpoints here. Ah, here it is, right? I was under models, that's my problem. Uh, so pipeline endpoints, that would be something. I, I think that if we had deployed our designer, I thought we would have saw it under there, but here we have our binary pipeline or our diabetes prod pipeline. So if we wanted to like test data, you know, we could pass stuff in here. Um, I think if we wanted to kind of just like see this in action, I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we'll give it a go. So if we go into our sample diabetes data set and we just explore some of the data, we should be able to kind of select out some values because I don't know what these values mean. So let's just say like 36. Oops, 36. But we already know that BMI is the major factor here. Uh, sex is either one or two, so we'll say two. BMI, we'll say 25.3. The BP will be 83 or whatever. Oops. 83 here. S1, uh, 160. S2 can be 99.6. Uh, S3, 45, 45, and 5. 5.1. Oh, we only, we're running out of metrics here. Uh, 82. I wonder why it doesn't give us all of them. Oh, I guess it does. It's up to six. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that, see what we get. And we got a result back, 168. So uh, that is uh, AutoML. I'll, I'll complete there for you. Um, yeah, so there you go.